This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm here at John Calvin Presbyterian Church, walking outside a very empty parking lot, though there are cars on the road. And I want to open up worship by telling you that I'm at the church and in the parking lot, but this is not the church. Right now, I'm going out to our outdoor chapel, which is significantly more beautiful once all the leaves come in. And here I am at the wooden pulpit with the wooden cross at John Calvin Presbyterian Church. But this is not the church. We decided we really believed in flattening the curve and trying to get others to do the same because we know that this, this is the outside of our original sanctuary, this is also not the church. Behind me is the pile of cut down wood that I'm pretty sure a guy named Hank put together so that people could have free wood and we could take care of our property. And our property is beautiful, but it's not the church. Hank's the church. And the playground equipment is not the church, but the play is the church. Here's a beam outside the church. I painted it along with a number of other people who cleaned up this area, including our Spanish-speaking congregation, IPCV. This beam is definitely not the church. But Alicia and IPCV and our community together that's the church. Now I'm heading into our current sanctuary, which is by far my favorite place in the church building. It's weird to be in here alone and doing worship. This amazing space is where I knew that I was called to this place. But no matter how beautiful it is, this is not the church. What we really miss is being together because this is not the church. You are the church, dear ones, and you are still the church no matter where you are watching this from. So let us worship God. Say it with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Remember God and be joyful. Remember how God has been victorious in the past. Remember who God is and what God has done. Remember and sing God's praise. Our gospel reading today is from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Listen for the word of God. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your father in heaven. So whenever you do give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I'm telling you, they have received their reward. But when you do give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I'm telling you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret 
will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us to the time of trial because res but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And, and, and whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show that they are fasting. Truly, I'm telling you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may, may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light you light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For either a slave will hate the one and love the other or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I'm telling you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you? By worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I'm telling you, even Solomon in all his glory was not, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for these things, for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is, today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we give you thanks for the ability to be together even when we are apart. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week has been, as they say, the longest year ever.
it's been a whirlwind of a week where uh, just about every church I know decided to close its physical doors and open its digital doors, and here we are together. I have seen amazing creativity and love and neighboring. I've witnessed the best of humanity, and I hope you have too, at one of the scariest times. This passage from Matthew was spoken to people who were also afraid. It's Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where he reminds them that how they see is really important. Your eyes, they are the lamp of the body. If they are filled with light, that means they're healthy. We talked on Ash Wednesday about this particular verse and how we are called during Lent to uh, realign our eyes, adjust them so that we can see as God sees that we are filled with light. We acknowledge that to see as God sees and to shine light on something means that we will see both the beauty and the destruction. That we will see the ways that we have succeeded and the ways that we have failed. Then, of course, we are called to name what we see. Right now, we are seeing made manifest uh, the lack of care that we have shown systemically for so many people. We are seeing before us the great gap between the haves and the have-nots, the great gap between the world that is and the kingdom of God. We are seeing that maybe our treasure and our heart haven't always been in the right place. Into this, Jesus speaks more words of worry. Do not be afraid. Do not worry, he says, about what you're going to wear or what you're going to eat, as if the people before him didn't really need to worry about that, as if there aren't people who need both the word of God and clothes and food. I know some people who actually believe this so literally that they don't plan for anything. Don't be those people. But, but, you have to take Jesus' words in the context of the whole. Jesus is saying, don't be the people that think about the worry first. Don't be people who are driven and led by fear and worry, which at this time, it's going to be difficult not to do. Jesus says, God knows that you need all these things. It's not, that, it's not that God doesn't know that. God knows that you need these things. It's just that first and foremost, you need to seek the kingdom of God. Align yourself with God's vision. Put your treasure value in the right places so that your heart can be there too. Right now, we have ample reason to worry, not just about ourselves, but about the very threads of our community that are coming apart. We have reason to worry about family and friends, about our own responsibilities. I mean, heck, I'm worried about how I'm going to stay at home with children and suddenly homeschool for at least a month. We have worries big and small. We're dealing with disappointments on top of that, but that's a sermon for another time. Into this, Jesus speaks the words that we so often hear throughout Scripture. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. And again, it is not because there's nothing to be afraid of or to worry about, but it's because we, as followers of Jesus Christ, cannot be led by worry. Worry says, there's not enough. Worry says, I'm not enough. Worry says, I need to take care of myself because no one else will take care of me. Worry says, if you have something, then it means I might not have it. God calls us to a spirit of abundance. 
God calls us to a spirit of mutual care and concern. God calls us to be God's people at such a time as this. I don't know about you, but I have seen amazing acts of faithfulness. Consider the doctors and the nurses and the staff, the janitors, the cafeteria workers in the hospital. Consider how they wake up and they go to their jobs where they will face threat to their own health, where they have to come up with creative ways to do what they have always done, to serve more people than they are perhaps prepared to serve. Consider those people and how they are working for the common good. Consider the, the teachers who are learning how to use online classrooms all over the country and the students who will seek to help them and learn a new way of learning. Consider the people who are reaching into their pantries to make sure that their neighbors have enough. Consider the miracles that we see when our eyes are filled with light and not fear. My prayer for you during this time is not that you'd ignore your feelings or not take care of your own needs. Certainly, care for yourself so that you can care for others. My message here is not that God has brought this upon us, but that God will enable us to be who we need to be for each other, for the common good. Consider how blessed you have already been and how you are called to be a blessing. God knows what we need. We need each other. We need God. May you be driven by love and not by fear. May you reach out to those who are isolated. May you tell people if you have a need, letting go of ego or shame. May you be blessed this day and every day. Amen. Our hymn for the day was chosen in light of all of these videos that are coming out of Italy, which is on, uh, this country is on lockdown because of the coronavirus. Everyone quarantined to their homes and leaning out of their windows, standing on their balconies, opening their doors so that they can sing in community with their neighbors. We in the church do believe that music makes for community. We also believe in reaching out every way we can. How can we keep from singing? I cannot think of a more appropriate hymn for the day. My life flows on in endless soul Above earth's lamentation I hear the clear, though far off him that hails the new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing through all the tumult and the strife? I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven.
wonder how can I keep from singing what though my joys and comforts die I know my Savior liveth what though the darkness gather round songs in the night he giveth no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep from singing the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart a fountain ever springing all things are mine since I am his how can I keep from singing no storm can shake our inmost calm while to that rock we're clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can we keep from singing since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can we keep from singing I'm standing next to the Belvedere Elementary School sign. School is closed, but many Fairfax County schools are staying open just so that they can hand out 
uh, canned goods and grocery card uh, gift certificates to families who qualify for free lunch. We have always participated in the Belvedere Backpack Lunch Program, which makes sure that kids have lunch over weekends, and we are going to continue to do that. We've already given them all the food that we had stored up, and we will now be giving them grocery store gift cards. If you are able to, in addition to your, or even in, in instead of your regular donation to the church, you can go on our website and donate to the Belvedere Backpack Lunch Program, and we will make sure that the schools get those gift cards to the families. God has called us for such a time as, as this to not hoard, but to give, to freely give what is not ours, but what is God's. So we ask that you would now, um, or right after this video, uh, give freely of what God has already given to you. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all of the gifts that surround us, for the gift and the privilege of being able to worship, for the gift and the privilege of having so much that we can share with others. For the gift that is when we give of ourselves, when we stretch ourselves so that others have what they need, that our treasure is in the right place. We thank you, God, for the ties that bind us together, for this reminder of how important we are for each other. Amen. Friends, this is the church. Right outside of our building, you will find the sign. The mission field begins right here. This is the church outside of the walls. What we do inside the walls prepares us to be the body of Christ outside in the world every single day of the week. And so, beloveds, may you go out into the world in peace and be of good courage. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and even forevermore. Amen. See you next week.